The 10-year development cycle of Final Fantasy XV has so many things that will forever remain a mystery. Or will they? I will never forget the day that Final Fantasy XV's second season pass of DLC content, titled Dawn of the Future, was cancelled. It was so tragic because it was a live stream where everyone was preparing to get brand new information, and instead they found out that the DLC wasn't coming, and all development and patches on the game were being shut down. The feeling of tremendous disappointment is one that is hard for fans to forget, especially after waiting so long and being so patient with the game. Well today, one of Final Fantasy's biggest secrets has been revealed. Why Final Fantasy XV Dawn of the Future was cancelled. And not only that, we found out why Hajime Tabata, the director of Final Fantasy XV, Crisis Core, Type-0, and many others, left Square Enix and ended up forming his own company. So please go ahead and punch that subscribe button because today, one of the most important Final Fantasy secrets, one that I personally have been wondering about for a long time, you guys know me, is finally coming to light. So first off, I want to shout out to my boy Genki, at GenkiJPN, so that we know everything that we do know today, and his source is coming from 4gamer.net. So let's take a look at this because it's really fascinating. Final Fantasy XV director Hajime Tabata said he left Square Enix due to a difference in philosophy between himself and the then Square Enix president, Yosuke Matsuda. He said, of course, the company followed the president's philosophy, therefore he couldn't do what he thought he should do, so he decided to leave and start his own company. Company, that company being JP Games. As far as the exact difference between what Tabata wanted to do and what Matsuda wanted to do, it remains unclear. It's really hard to say, but right now Tabata's company is focusing on a ton of NFT games. And considering Square Enix's enthusiasm for NFTs in the past, I don't think that Matsuda would have stopped him from doing that. If anything, Square Enix has embraced a lot of Web3 projects, so there's still a lot of curiosity for what exactly the breaking points were for the directions that they wanted to go. Tabata had his own studio. That studio was Luminous Productions who went on to make Forspoken. He was the lead of that studio, meaning that he could have done whatever he wanted to do. But it seems like, at some capacity, he still felt limited by Square Enix. But again, it, it is weird to think that with his own dedicated studio, with a ton of money going into it, with AAA budgets, with him being able to decide the course of direction of what he wanted to make, that he still couldn't feel like he could do exactly what he wanted wanted to do and ended up leaving Square. This being said, Yosuke Matsuda is no longer the president of Square Enix. The new president of Square, Kiryu-san, is doubling down on AAA games, something that many fans were happy to hear, although many were unhappy because it is coming at the cost of Square Enix's AA games, meaning that things like Star Ocean, the Valkyrie series, they might be in a little bit of trouble going forward, or at least that's what some worry. Now let's talk about the Final Fantasy XV DLC and its cancellation. Here is Genki's translation on that. FF15 director Hajime Tabata said he still regrets the FF15 DLC that they promised was cancelled. Quote, where I think I am disappointed is that the planned DLC was cancelled. That really was a big shame. We had a lot of additional content planned for FF15, but in the end, parts of it was cancelled. At that time, it really was something that couldn't be helped. I still regret it to this day. We were not able to keep our promise, and we were not able to provide all the content that we had planned for players who were looking forward to it. He then continues by saying, he says the cancellation of the DLC was not his decision, and he was depressed that he couldn't stop it. But he says the frustration of it has motivated him to make up for it by making new and interesting games for those disappointed players from now on. So again, you know, a lot of times people are quick to blame the devs, but a lot of times, most times, 99% of the time, it is not the developers. The developers always want to deliver you the best product that they possibly can. I don't know any creative that ever wants to deliver you a half-baked product. Artists pride themselves on their work, and they'll do whatever they can within their means in order to get it to you in the best way they possibly can. The people who do want to deliver you something anything that you'll pay for as fast as possible so that they can collect their paycheck is the upper management and investors. These are the people who want their money and they want it now. And as such, the developers are the ones who are tasked with putting that out as soon as they can, however they can. Many of us did want that content. We did want Dawn of the Future. In particular, the thing that breaks my heart the most is the modding tools. We were supposed to get way more extensive modding tools to be able to 
to mod Final Fantasy XV, and those modding tools would allow you to edit levels, re-script the game, make new mini-games and stuff. It was so cool. But all of that stuff got cancelled, and unfortunately, the only thing we got of it was Episode Arden. This also means a ton of patch content that was coming for FF15 in between all those DLCs, which the game was routinely getting brand new features and stuff. It's quite clear that the decision to cancel the DLC was made by the higher-ups. They likely want it for Spoken to get further along in development, and making more DLC for a game that was already tremendously financially successful. That probably wouldn't add to the game's success that much, but the cost and time of developing it probably wouldn't have made sense compared to just developing a new AAA game. I imagine that it made a ton of sense to just say, well if Tabata is leaving, we're canceling the DLC and we're going forward with our plans to develop what would eventually become Forspoken. Now in hindsight, this is really ironic. The reason being is that it's not like Forspoken was a very high selling game. In fact, Square Enix would go on to say that Forspoken sales were lackluster. While publicly sales of the game were never really disclosed, it seems likely to me that the game probably didn't even break a million units. Which basically is to say they probably would have been better off and more profitable developing Dawn of the Future with a 20 or $30 season pass than they would have developing the entirety of Forspoken and it bombing and eventually shutting down Luminous Productions. But the part of this all that hurts the most is that it feels like we never quite got the closure that many were hoping for with Final Fantasy XV. Dawn of the Future is a novel that tells you about everything that was supposed to happen in the DLC, which is nice at least we know. However, it's not the most exciting way to explore a video game's alternate conclusion. One that was supposed to give the fans and the ones dissatisfied more content to round off all of their feelings with the game. A fraction of my life, a very significant fraction of my life, my name on this YouTube channel is The Night Sky Print, which is a reference to my excitement for uh, Final Fantasy Versus 13 back in the day and then Final Fantasy 15 released and then me starting the content here and me cosplaying Noctis and this is a huge portion of my life here and it's very interesting to think it's also a huge portion of the developers lives too. Tetsuya Nomura for example being one of them. So many people are still curious about what Final Fantasy Versus 13, the initial idea, the initial concept of Final Fantasy 15, what it was going to be. And how tonally and artistically different it already had presented itself in the trailers. The development of Verum Rex and Kingdom Hearts 4, which are making very, very direct references to Final Fantasy Versus 13. It is not impossible for us to eventually figure out what exactly Nomina wanted to do. Maybe not in full, maybe not in whole, but I think that we will know bits and pieces that will allow us to infer what the bigger picture was going to be like. In a lot of ways, there are still many, 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 many mysteries with Final Fantasy XV. But I have hope that one day, somehow, we will find out the truth behind everything. The development, what Final Fantasy vs. XIII was supposed to be. And perhaps through Verum Rex, get an alternative look at what it could be. That is my hope for Final Fantasy 15. But whatever happens, and if we get that news, you can absolutely be sure that I will be there to tell you guys about every single detail. And just to let you guys know, I do have channel members available now. So if this channel means a lot to you, and if my work over the years is something that you want to support, please hit the join button below this video and you can support the channel. You can also support the channel through Patreon with a link in the description below. But if none of those options are viable for you, a like and a comment will always suffice. And I'll see you all in the next video.